Trump says that Israel needs to finish the job. And this is exactly why I fully agree with Nick Fuentes. We shouldn't be enthusiastic at all about the Trump presidency. It will be a presidency totally in line with the system, totally in line with the deep state. Trump is not going there this time with any sort of promise of undermining the deep state. And you're going to have, if anything, more of a powerful deep state. Because Biden, you know, say what you want about him. Uh, he doesn't openly stand with the genocide of Gaza. At least he gives it, gives it a little pushback. Trump is totally like, oh yeah, they need to finish the job more clearly. It needs to be totally won, totally. So, number one, they have to finish the job. Israel has to finish that job. They have to finish it quickly, strongly, and they have to get back to life again because it's taking too long. They have to finish the job. You're saying go in. It's, ta it's taking too long to commit a genocide. Well, uh, so what he's saying is commit it stronger. Uh, you know, ethnic cleanse a little, a little faster. Win and finish. Gotta win. Gotta win. The <laughs> attack on our gotta win. Gotta win. Uh, there, there's no possibility of losing. October 7th. Yeah, there's good real estate in there. We need to get in and, and rebuild the real estate. And it's getting more and more demeaned. They're demeaning it. I have people now telling me they don't think the attack ever happened. And <laughs> so now he's fully siding with the Jews on, oh my God, denial of October 7th. Oh my God, this is such conspiracy. So he's, I mean, this is symbolic because yeah, sure. October 7th happened for sure. It's a fact. And now whether, whether you want to argue, okay, there, there was improper behavior on the Israeli side. Sure. But you can't deny October 7th happened physically. Uh, but so it's a symbolic approach, but still within this symbolism, what is Trump saying? He's saying I'm fully siding with the Jews here. And take a look, you watch, the news reports I have the where people that are protesting. Video. Sure, I know you're doing so do I. But here's the thing. You watch these people on television, and then just like you have Holocaust deniers also, they say the Holocaust never took. It's the exact same people. They're saying it never happened. AOC plus three. You know, Israel was the most powerful lobby in the country 15 years ago. Today, between Tlaib and AOC and all of these people, what they're doing, uh, Israel, they don't have the back end that they once had. You'll give it to them. Yeah, I have the, I'm good. I'm good. But He's saying I'm good. He's saying straight out to the Jews listening, I'm good. I'm on your side. Look at the other side. They're the ones who can't help but integrate anti-Semites in their in their ranks. And yes, AOC plus three is now basically code word for the anti-Semitic crew of uh, of the Democrat Party, people who have gone so far left that they are against the Israeli terrorists. Uh, so, I mean, Trump here is running a very different campaign from 2016, which in a way kind of means that he's probably going to win. Jewish and terrorists in America wins. It always wins. So... Trump here will probably win and will then probably be owing a lot to Jewish and terrorists. Uh, this, is, this is the nature of Trump. He's been oscillating. He has no principles on this question. He's been oscillating because in the 90s, he was all for the Jews. The other candidate is an anti-Semite. In 2016, he was saying to the Jews, I don't want your money. You're not going to like me. I'm going to... And basically, he over-signaled, basically, his anti-Semitism in 2016 because, really, he, he didn't do anything horrible for the Jews. Between 2016 and 2020, he was totally in line with them, gave them the airstrikes that they were demanding in Syria, gave them some symbolic moves of embassies, blah, blah, blah. So he basically, uh, he, he lives in the world of signaling. and. He told so hard to the Jews that he, that this would be America first from now on, and we not we we would not join endless wars anymore. That he may have actually received a bigger slap from the Jewish establishment that he actually deserved, because in reality he's not done anything against Jewish and terrorists. And now 
is back to fully, openly, and explicitly signaling the support of Jewish and terrorists. They don't have the backing. Even Schumer has become like a Palestinian. Chuck Schumer, Jewish, always strong for Israel. He's become like a Palestinian. <laughs> so, now, so now Chuck Schumer, a representative of, say, Jewish power within American politics. Now Chuck Schumer is almost like a Palestinian. <laughs> And Palestinians are almost all terrorists, so Chuck Schumer is almost like a terrorist. Chuck Schumer is two degrees of separation from a terrorist. How? <laughs> It's ridiculous. Trump is trying so hard to please to the Jewish lobby that he's saying absolute nonsense. Uh, and then says Ch Schumer isn't Jewish enough for Donald. Uh, and yes, you, you know, DK Shadow says, oh, no, he's not a Palestinian. <laughs> It's like, well, that within Jewish power in, in American politics, there is, it's basically Palestinian, terrorist, uh, Arab. It's all one thing, really. It's their code word to talk about race in a way that they don't allow others to talk about race. But really, they are at war with the Arab world. Uh, that is what Israel is. They've been at war with the Arab world forever. And when they say, oh, he's almost like a Palestinian, it's, it's almost like using a racial slur. The, everyone knows what they're talking about. It, it's th those evil people, those backward people. But that's what they mean, and that's what they hear. But it's their way of doing it with a, with a way of uh denying plausible denial that they're not really talking about race they're just talking about the specific terrorist in palestine it called for elections in the middle of a war yeah it's uh it's a very bad thing it's a very sad thing and it's a very dangerous thing but if you look so many people like who who, who cares about a call for election in the middle of a war because some democrats are uncomfortable with bibi netanyahu uh <laughs> no one cares about these things except someone who is needing to kneel to the Jewish lobby, and that is Donald Trump, ladies and gentlemen, probably the president starting next February. So I believe he will win, uh, but I believe it will cement Jewish power within the Republican Party. Jewish power has al always been very comfortable playing the Republican side, just like they've been comfortable playing the Democrat side. Um, you know, the, the whole era of from George Bush to Barack Obama just shows this. The Jews don't care. They will, <clears throat> they will recruit a Republican president to launch some wars in the Middle East. They will recruit a black leftist president to just continue the cleaning with the drone bombardments and continue the wars that are already initiated. That's what they've been doing. Um, they don't mind going back through the cycle, going back to a Trump, uh, who Trump could probably initiate a war within four years. I haven't heard Trump talk about endless wars in, election, in this election. So are we headed to, toward endless wars again? Are we headed toward a war, war with Russia? Perhaps. I don't know that under Trump we stay in a peaceful situation. All right. What else do we have? Uh, yeah, Nick Fuentes was, I totally agree with what he has to say here. I love Trump. I'm loyal to Trump. I support Trump. But I am not yet committed to voting at all in this election. And isn't that the same logic that Trump employed in 2016? When Trump said that he would not commit to supporting the eventual nominee if he didn't win. Mr. Trump. So, Mr. Trump, to be clear, you're standing on a Republican primary. I fully understand. The place where the RNC will give the nominee the nod. I fully understand. And that experts say an independent run would almost certainly hand the race over to Democrats and likely another Clinton. You can't say tonight that you can make that pledge. I cannot say I have to respect the person that if it's not me, the person that wins. But I'm, you know, talking about a lot of leverage. He said, I'm talking about a lot of leverage. 
well, to the extent that I have some leverage, I'm going to exercise it. I am someone that has supported Trump for eight years, but I want my followers to know, and I want Trump to know if the message gets to him, that I don't know that I will turn out, I certainly won't be enthusiastic, if we're gonna get Trump plus Nikki Haley and Rick Grinnell and all these swamp creatures like Lindsey Graham and Tim Scott, if we're gonna get another First Step Act, if we're gonna get a war with Iran, we have to set some parameters. I've been treated very unfairly. Uh, I'll give you an example. Unfairly I've by won, who? Uh, I think by basically the RNC, the Republican Party, the establishment. Where were they in 2015? They were supporting every other candidate other than Trump. All right. I, I fully agree with Nick Frantes here. And as far as the current election, if it doesn't change, if we don't get new announcement from Trump, uh, radical change in the way he speaks and in what he commits to. As far as I'm concerned, I wash my hands of the 2024 American election. I wash my hand. I don't give a shit who gets elected. The two options are bad. The two options will bring America in a very bad direction. But I have a little pinch to the art when my objective analysis is that maybe I should even support Biden? Because I, I don't know, Biden just talks a little bit against what Israel is doing. I feel that Biden would kind of hesitate to attack our Iran. And I'm not sure that Trump would. I'm not sure that Trump would. Perhaps the, the dangerous Trump that has been paranoid and imagined by the left, as far as his commitments when went in 2016, perhaps the dangerous Trump is the Trump of today. A Trump who likes to threaten, who likes to advance, who likes to tickle and say, oh yeah, we're going to strike you, Vladimir Putin. Perhaps that's a dangerous Trump to have in a desperate country with internal problems, a growth of the state, a growth of demographics that are basically in the need of dying and and therefore, a situation that never before that's like never before in terms of the thirst for war, the thirst to send our entire male population to go die in a useless war against an enemy that we don't even need to beat. Um, you know, <laughs> I hate Biden, but it's kind of weird that I have to. I have to actually bias my own internal thinking to make a case for Trump. I have to say, oh, well, you know, Trump is going to give us a good running economy. Trump is going to operate a little better on immigration. I have to make these arguments, and I shouldn't. I should be totally enthusiastic for Trump because it should be easy for Trump to get my, my support. Uh, because he got it before, and he is one of the best presidents we've had in a long time. Uh, how is it that he can't even charm me? And what does that tell you about how he will charm the American people? I don't know. Russian warships steam for Caribbean as Ukraine tensions go global. So basically, what I, uh, what, what I was speculating about, there will be something like the Cuban Missile Crisis. Because now you have official positioning of the U.S. that says, yes, Ukraine, we are giving you weapons. And yes, we are giving you the permission to use it inside Russian territory. And yes, we can approve targets for you and we will give you the intelligence. I mean, at this point, how is that not war? If you do all of the steps toward striking a territory, like... it. Like if Russia did the same with missiles being sent by South Africa into uh, into North Dakota, uh, it seems that it wouldn't just be the fault of South Africa. It seems that the U.S. would then go at war with South Africa, Russia, and anyone who's been participating to the chain of causality. Well, now it's what Russia is doing. They are sending ships using international waters because, yeah, you can get very close to the U.S., as it turns out, by international law. And you can have these destroyers on platforms or these warships. Uh, in this case, they will be sending some warships to demonstrate the capacity to project na naval power uh, globally and uh, to, to basically uh, show the American people and 
the American political class. Are you sure you want to have? Are you sure you want to have this kind of hidden war conflict with us? Because we're gonna have our warships hanging out very close to your borders, and you know, with the dagger type of missile that they've made, it seems that. It seems that a destroyer in the Caribbean could easily strike uh, potentially any target without much of a flight, any target within the US in a way that is not defendable by conventional anti-air measures. Uh, if, if what they say about the Dagger missile is true, it is an unstoppable nuclear bomb headed to, you can say, oh, you can see it on the radar. But apparently, it totally evades uh, the defense capacities that humanity knows uh, about. So there is no known way to stop these daggers because they are intelligent uh, devices that that can totally change linear direction. They are not just things that are launched and then fall onto the position. They are actively powered and they, they basically can fly. If that and they can fly at uh, very high speeds, so we would have Russia within striking capacity, uh, striking distance, and apparently no defense against other than 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 sinking all their boats and trying to target all their planes as they lift off. But that we probably wouldn't be able to neutralize everything all at the same time at all times. There would probably be holes in the armor. So it's not a desirable situation. There is no interest for America to do this, to get into this war. It's going to be a, the saddest war. It's going to continue to proxies, probably Iran first, and, and, and then per, perhaps open conflict with Russia at some point in the decades to come. All of it causing human suffering for two nations that are totally fine on their own and that don't need to go at each other. And it's really just the greediness of the American political class that's causing this war. The greediness and wanting to control things up to Ukraine, where Ukraine has been understood as a traditionally Russian part of the world uh, that, had, that, that wasn't part of Russia anymore, but that still was culturally Russian. Uh, so we're basically talking about the imperialism of an elite political class that's on a quest of vengeance against the Russians that is deciding to make America pay for this quest of vengeance. We have to start saying no, and what we need to say no is a candidate like Trump in 2016. But Trump of 2024 is not saying no. Trump of 2024 may very well be the man who presses the button on a nuclear strike against Russia. And who does it because he's warned Vladimir before. He said to Vladimir, if you get into Ukraine, I'm going to launch, uh, I'm going to send a nuclear bomb onto uh, Moscow. It would be very sad to see all this real estate destroyed. Well, there you go. You might get Trump to do it. And you might have a bloodthirsty enough Jewish contingent of American politics that is actually so enthusiastic about this that they will side with their enemy. They will side with Trump, who they used to hate. But they, they don't hate Trump as much at this point now that he's kneeling. They don't hate him as much as they hate Biden for, for being such a, a party pooper for the Gazan genocide. I mean, it's... <laughs> I, I, I just can't believe the archness of the words that, that come out of my mouth to just describe the current situation. It's actually quite shocking because the world was kind of peaceful. 2016, the world was kind of peaceful to 2018, 2019. Uh, and, and all things went to shit when Trump didn't get reelected. And then the Russian to Ukraine stuff. And then the meddling of the US political class in, in Ukraine which had started back from to, back in 2014. It sucks that we are in this situation. Thank you for watching this clip by Colonel J. This is the King of Bold here. Remember to like and subscribe. Juice.